Um, okay, so hi, uh, I am also not going to give you any answers in this one. I'm just going to give you some more problems. Um, uh, I work for a company called Worth. We're a consultancy agency based in the Netherlands in the UK, uh, and I'm a delivery lead there, which means I tend to work a lot with organizational structures um, and also about flow. Flow is part of my job. And I did that on the basis of working um, 20 years in engineering before, 10 of which spent pretty intensively working on distributed computer systems. So what do we mean by distributed computer systems? I'm going to steal um, a wonderful definition from Ruben Tan here. Uh, it's a great working definition. It's a bunch of processes, i.e. things that do work in a networked, i.e. connected environment, communicating via messages, i.e. asynchronously, and acting as a single coherent entity. We build these things for the benefits of resilience, scalability, modularity, and it's fairly clear that these are the most important class of software system at this time. You might argue that, but no distributed systems, no internet. Uh, so speaking to you, uh, DDDU, I imagine that we're all pretty familiar with these in software contexts. But in a human context, it's actually no different. Humans do work, we work with each other, we work asynchronously. Uh, I mean, I hope your customers aren't literally standing at your desks waiting for you to finish your coding. Um, and those customers are probably working through the face of a company, right? They're not working with you particularly. Um, it's some bigger organizational entity. So very similar, actually. And uh, let's look at that a little bit more. If you think about distributed computer systems. Well, software systems have built on service clusters, right? So human ones, uh, nodes and pods, drives and squads. Uh, don't necessarily do this because you are not Spotify, or at least probably most of you aren't Spotify, but similar concepts. Um, do this though, this is a good way of doing this, right? Different scales and different ways we can do this. We also have bounded contexts, right? In software distribution systems, you know, triple E, yo. Um, we understand this fairly well. Same thing for humans. Software bounded contexts are actually built to serve human ones, right? Intentionally or not. And uh, that's basically Conway's law. We have message queues in distributed systems. We kind of have to, right? So that the work can stand, work can be processed, or pub sub, whatever you like. Yeah, we humans have those too. Those are your backlogs, right? You're serving queues every day of your life if you're a software engineer, at least if you're a scrumish. Um, but what is implicit in Ruben Tan's definition, I'm going to make explicit. Decentralized control. And that's because cap theorem is a thing, right? And the reality is computer networks absolutely will fail. They fail all the time. So we have to choose, right? Cap theorem says that you cannot have guaranteed consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. If we say that partitions are going to happen, we have to choose between consistency and availability with effective message latency in either case. And that centralized control, therefore, becomes kind of meaningless. So mostly web-facing internet, we look at high availability. That's what we tend to favor. That mostly wins in software. In human systems, not so much. They tend to favor centralized control. Centralized control. The majority of software is still built by non-distributed systems, by CA, optimized systems, in fact. 300-ish years. We have, and not unreasonably, assumed that the workers would be more or less in the same building and able to work with each other. We assumed that partition tolerance was not a thing, not a risk for human systems. So we optimized for consistency and availability, which has been perfectly fine, ethics aside, until we got hit by one or two really nasty viruses. We just got partitioned, ladies and gentlemen. Organizations operating on CA designs will fail. But you already know the answer to this, right? You know what has to happen. Distributed human systems. So maybe we can think about applying some of the distributed systems techniques that we employ in software contexts to human ones. Consensus algorithms. We know about quorums, but Byzantine faults, fischler lich parson impossibility, guaranteed delivery. We're pretty sophisticated in this stuff in software, actually. Humans have some ways to go. So we think about modeling message flow and scaling demands with Markov chains in software systems. What does that look like in a human context, though? Well, I think we can do better than this trickle-down thing. I mean, these hierarchies, very slow in OODA loops. Increase the decision latency. This is where you're going to start having problems. Maybe we can think about what this is going to look like. Decentralize it. Maybe this is actually about trust. 
why do we put different trust levels on systems when they build out of software than when they're built out of humans? That says something about us, I think. When you think about all these concepts, what it might look like when you apply them to human contexts, what, what would serverless look like for humans? What about auto-scaling for humans? And the reason I talk about this is because you are a generation of engineers who are intensively trained to design, build, and operate distributed software systems. This is really an appeal um, because there is a higher order problem and which could also use your skills maybe. So I'd like you, I'd encourage you to think about that as I did and start thinking about maybe another problem space that you could contribute to. Thank you kindly. Um, I'm best contacted by my email. At, um, I hope that was at least stimulating.